This is Dr. Cameron Kyle Seidel, ER and critical care doctor from New York City. Nine days ago, I opened an intensive care unit to care for the sickest COVID positive patients in this city. In these nine days, I have seen things I have never seen before. In treating these patients, I have witnessed medical phenomenon that just don't make sense in the context of treating a disease that is supposed to be a viral pneumonia. Nine days ago, I presumed I was opening an intensive care unit to treat patients with a virus causing a pneumonia that was ravaging lungs across the world, starting out as something mild, a uh, cough, a sore throat, and progressively increasing in severity until ultimately ending in something called acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS. This is the paradigm that every hospital in the country is working under. This is the disease, ARDS, that every hospital is preparing to treat. And this is the disease, ARDS, for which in the next two to six weeks, 100,000 Americans might be put on a ventilator. And yet, everything I've seen in the last nine days, all the things that just don't make sense, the patients I'm seeing in front of me, the lungs I'm trying to improve, have led me to believe that COVID-19 is not this disease and that we are operating under a medical paradigm that is untrue. In short, I believe we are treating the wrong disease, and I fear that this misguided treatment will lead to a tremendous amount of harm to a great number of people in a very short time. As New York City appears to be about 10 days ahead of the country, I feel compelled to get this information out. COVID-19 lung disease, as far as I can see, is not a pneumonia and should not be treated as one. Rather, it appears as if some kind of viral, it appears as some kind of viral induced disease, most resembling high altitude sickness. It is as if tens of thousands of my fellow New Yorkers are on a plane at 30,000 feet and the cabin pressure is slowly being let out. These patients are slowly being starved of oxygen. I have seen patients dependent on oxygen, take off their oxygen and quickly progress through a state of anxiety and emotional distress and eventually get blue in the face. And while they look like patients absolutely on the brink of death, they do not look like patients dying of pneumonia. I have never been a mountain climber, and I do not know the conditions at base camp below the highest peaks in the world, uh, but I suspect that the patients I'm seeing in front of me uh, look most like as if a person was dropped off on the top of Mount Everest without time to acclimate. Uh, I don't know the final answer of this disease, but I'm quite sure that a ventilator is not it. Uh, that is not to say that we don't need ventilators. We absolutely need them. Uh, they are the only way at this time that we are able to give a little more oxygen to patients who need it. Uh, but when we treat people with ARDS, uh, we typically use ventilators uh, to treat what's called respiratory failure. Uh, that is, uh, we use the ventilator to do the work that the patient's muscles can no longer do because they're too tired to do it. These patients' muscles work fine. I fear that we are, I fear that if we are using a false paradigm to treat a new disease. Uh, that the method that we program the ventilator, one based on a notion of respiratory failure as opposed to oxygen failure, that this method, and there are a great many number of methods we can use with the ventilator, but this method being widely adopted at this very moment in every hospital in the country, which aims to increase pressure on the lungs in order to open them up, is actually doing more harm than good. And that the pressure we are providing uh, that we are providing to lungs, we may be providing to lungs that cannot stand it, that cannot take it, and that the ARDS that we are seeing, that the whole world is seeing, may be nothing more than lung injury caused by the ventilator. Now, I don't know the final answer to this disease. Uh, I do sense that we will have to use ventilators. Uh, we will have to use a great many number of ventilators, and we need a great many number of ventilators, but I sense that we can use them in a much safer way. Uh, in a much safer method. Uh, that safer method challenges long-held dogmatic beliefs within the medical community and among lung specialists, which will not be easy to overcome. But I really believe uh, that they must be overcome. Uh, there are hundreds of thousands of lungs in this country at risk, and, and the time to overcome them is now. Uh, I'm confident that if those of us that work bedside with these patients those of us who are witnessing the things that we have never seen before, despite the many years we have worked and the thousands of patients and diseases we have seen, if we can effectively communicate this to all those that are so important but who are not bedside, the researchers, the administrators, uh, those who procure our resources and make our protocols, the politicians, our own governments, 
uh, if we are able to convince them that this is a disease that is different than anything we have ever seen, I am confident that an answer can be found, uh, that effective treatment can be discovered, and that a plan to disseminate that treatment can be rapidly deployed, uh, and that tens of thousands and probably hundreds of thousands of lives and lungs will be protected. The time for this is now. We are staring into a future in which a great many of our fellow Americans are going to suffer, not to mention people all around the world. Uh, for those of who will not suffer directly from this disease, from the terrible human cost of this disease, for those who will not lose a family member or a friend, and there will be a great many number of people who will lose those close to them, but for those who don't, uh, they are still going to suffer from the great economic cost of COVID-19. We, we are all involved in this future. Uh, so I urge you, for those of us, for, for if you are out there, for those who work bedside, I urge you to speak up. Uh, we can, we can change this. I thank you all for listening. Please spread the message and stay safe.